speak on today's um, matter for public importance. And I find it absolutely fascinating that this government is trying to claim they've been investing record amounts in regional Victoria. Because I probably don't even have to say anything. I can just uh, list the lived experience of a regional Victorian, a particularly one who lives right on the outskirts of the regions, right towards the South Australian border. And I really... I won't start on roads, but I'm pretty confident I'll spend a bit of time on roads because the further away we get from the tram tracks, the worse our roads get. And that's the real lived experience of regional Victorians. But I'm not going to just go on without evidencing what um, I will state as fact. And I'm not going to use my work. I'm going to use the work of the Parliamentary Budget Office, a, a, a report that was completed in April this year. And it clearly shows in black and white the reality of how metropolitan <coughs> Melbourne under this government versus the regions um, have been faring. And I tell you, it's quite here in black and white that regional Victoria is not getting their fair share. So I'll, I'll go to some of the inf information in this document and I'll take you to page two of the document, which actually uh, talks about the asset investment per person. And in the document, it highlights that in metropolitan Melbourne, the amount per person, Speaker, is $15,268 per person, as against regional Victorians who get 7142 Now, the situation is that um, the document talks about how most projects have, particularly in regional Victoria, an ex a, a lot of funding that comes from the federal government. In fact, the federal government have done all the heavy lifting. And when you look at uh, what the document says, it says, and when you look at asset investment of projects worth 100 million or more, exclude, when you exclude the Australian government funding, that's the federal funding, $79 billion has been invested in metropolitan Melbourne versus 11 billion in regional Victoria. Now, that means that persons in metropolitan Victoria were invested around 114% higher than regional Victoria. So again, this report demonstrates that the government have been trying to say they're investing in regional Victoria, when in reality, they're taking the federal money, they're putting it in the budget, and they're portraying this as the money that Victorians are getting from the Victorian government, when they've actually been getting most of the investment that's happened in regional Victoria from the feds. Now, I will take you to an example in my electorate of South West Coast. And um, in 2017, Daniel, uh, the Premier, um, made a flying visit to Warrnambool, and I mean literally a flying visit. He didn't actually travel by our roads or our rail. And he came to Spruik that the government, his government, would invest $104 million into the Warrnambool line. $114 million, sorry, into the Warrnambool line. The reality actually is that 104 of that 114 was federal money. Now, he said that work would begin in 2018 and would take 12 to 18 months, meaning it would be completed by 2019 in the, at the earliest. And here we are in 2022, and guess what? It's not complete. That line upgrade, we're now told, should be completed by the end of this year at a cost of, not $114 million, but $252 million. Now, this is just one project where this current state government has managed and blown out the cost of. Now, that's a contribution from the federal government of $226 million of that $252. $26 million by the state. $26 million, just 10 per cent by the state. So the people of country Victoria aren't fooled by this state government saying they're investing because they can see the reality is it is not the state government. So the government likes to confuse the way things are reported, and even in the Weekly Times today, um, there's an article uh, pointing out how the government, the way they've structured the budget, is making it hard for um, anyone to be able to make sense of the um, budget for maintenance of uh, key maintenance measures for roads. Um, the Vic Roads annual reports are published in a way that makes it almost impossible, and it's making it uh, blurring its budget numbers. So Vic, Vic Roads has been subsumed into the mega department of <coughs> transport and so its financials cannot be analysed, the article talks uh, to. And it, it's, it's changed its performance measures, 
the um, Vic Roads has changed its performance measures from reporting the number of regional roads and kilometres maintained to the square kilometres um, maintained. It's just making it impossible to compare the two measures. And why do you think they knew, needed to do that? They're fudging the figures, so they're trying to fool Victorians into believing they're actually doing more than they're doing. I look at um, the figures in the budget books. Now, if I take you to uh, budget paper four and we look at the um, projects in the, under the Department of Health, new projects um, part of the budget. And this government talks about 2.9 billion in health in the 2022-23 budget and health, inf health infrastructure, with one billion of that being in regional health. Well, this is where it gets really good, because we have here Barwon Women's and Children's Hospital, Geelong. It's a, a project that's supposed to cost a half a billion dollars. So let's see what it says they're going to invest in that project in the first year, which is 2022. Nothing. There's nothing there. It says TBC. The next year after that, what's the next figure they're going to put into this project of building a very important hospital that they've talked about and spruced about? TBC. Nothing. And then we go out into um, the next year. So the figure there again is TBC, even under completion date to be confirmed. And if I turn over the page and I look at Melton Hospital, clearly under the um, 2.9 billion into health um, in the metropolitan area, well, again, there's nothing there. It says the project's going to cost uh, 900 million, but... If you look out into the next figures of 2022, 22, 23 and forward, nothing. Not a single dollar being allocated. So these are the sorts of figures that the government's trying to claim they're using to tell us stories, but there's actually nothing there to back it up. I might go to budget paper um, number three and let's have a look because this, this government also says that it's spending $12 billion this year more in health. Well, it's really not that hard to read. It's not research, it's not analysis, it's just reading. And if you go to the output summary by the department's objectives and go down to the 2021-22 figure, figure, the total figure, last year on health, $27 billion was spent. Now, if you go to the next column, this is how you read budgets, it's not that hard. Anyone who's run a business has to do this every day. 2022-23, go to the column, total figure at the bottom, $25 billion. 27, 25. 27 last year, 25 20 for this year. That's a $2 billion cut. It's as simple and as clear as that. But we hear from this current government that they are actually investing $12 billion more. Well, let's analyse that for a minute. It's just deception. It is absolute clear deception. Because what they're really doing is telling us about dollars that they've already spent, like what they've put into 3.5 billion out of that 12 billion is either allocated in the budget that has already been spent. And this includes 1.3 billion already spent on PPE and COVID uh, programs, more than a billion already spent on rapid antigen tests. Well, they've already been stuck down someone's neck and in the bin. Um, more on, um, on uh, vaccinations, well, they're in people's arms and gone. So the federal government are the ones that put most of that money forward. This is absolute smoke and mirrors budgeting on behalf of this government and spruiking not the truth. So it's a government that makes absolute false statements. And I'm just going to end on the roads because when I hear the government say they're doing a ma an amazing job of our roads in regional Victoria and claim that our complaints about the roads are our imagined fantasies, I think that is absolutely insulting. And our crumbling roads, our massive potholes, our our um, dangerous shoulders is a result of the government not spending the right amount of money in the area of maintenance and road management. They want to reduce the speed rather than fix the roads properly. And this is a government that is absolutely trying to deceive Victorians, particularly regional Victorians, but it is our lived experience in regional Victoria, our roads that we drive on that are failing, our rail that is not getting the investment it needs and not taking us where we need to go in a timely manner like the city get, that makes this so easy to discredit this government. 
This is deception at its grandest. And when you look at the government saying in Parliament yesterday, we're not cutting um, Portland Health, but we haven't got the services we had two, three, four months ago, there's nothing short of being deceptive to the people of regional Victoria.